one great thing about living in Cheltenham is we are only two hours away from London and one hour away from Birmingham. After a beautiful train ride through the green fields and flocks of sheep, you arrive in the big and bustling city of Birmingham. As I explained in my video last Friday, which was a family history tour of Birmingham, this is a city which is important to our family because Ian has roots here, and it's a major city not far from our home in Cheltenham, so we visit here occasionally. In this video, I'll show you a mashup of some of the fun things we have seen and done in a few of our visits to Brum this summer and last, starting with the Birmingham New Street Station. Ian's ready for our day in Birmingham. Even though our train was a little bit delayed, it was still a really easy, fast, one-hour trip to the Birmingham New Street Station. I love the Birmingham New Street Station architecture because it reminds me of the Bean in Chicago. Not far from the station on New Street is a bakery called Medicine. I heard about this place in a Top Jaw video and we decided we needed to go check it out. The decor is unique and lovely and the ambience was great. And, well, uh, the baked goods on display when you enter all look amazing. We opted to dine in and have a more savory meal and ordered the classic Eggs Benedict and the Salt Beef Reuben, both of which were very tasty. Now we are walking through the Bullring shopping area of Birmingham, the central area that we seem to walk backwards and forwards through constantly when we are here. This is one thing I love about Birmingham. Modern architecture here, the Bullring Shopping Center, right next to this very old, beautiful church. The old church, which is an important landmark in this area, is called St. Martin in the Bullring, and I show the interior of it in my family history video from last week, which is linked in the description. To me, it seems like St. Martin's should be the cathedral in the city, but the cathedral is actually some distance away. Stay tuned to the end of this video to see inside the cathedral. Wouldn't be a bullring without a bull. I see that there are some Brummies who are also fans of magenta. Another landmark in this part of the city is the bronze statue honoring Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson. I always think of Napoleon when I see this sculpture because of his hand inside his jacket. Turns out that in 1803, he sailed against the fleet of Napoleon. And this statue was built because Admiral Nelson visited Brum in 1802 and the people of Birmingham donated 2,500 pounds to create this monument in his honor. We've been to the Bull Ring many times before, but not to the Bull Ring Market, so we're gonna check it out. Open air market with all kinds of fruit and veg. Those strawberries look really good. I don't know what these are. Please comment and inform me. We're back here in the market the next day on Thursday and there's a lot more stuff and it's a lot more lively. People shouting about cheddar cheese and things. <laughs> there's more than just fruit and veg here today. There's all kinds of cheese, which by the way is melting in the sun. Ooh, look at that Wensleydale mango and papaya. That sounds delicious. And then all kinds of bags and luggage and fabric. A lot more than just fruit and veg today. I know nothing about sport, but I do know that Michael Jordan was the best basketball player of all time, and he played for the Chicago Bulls, and his number was 23. So I guess this is how you get around ownership issues of the estate, is you reverse the numbers and then just say, oh, he's just a person who possibly looks a little bit like MJ. Now I've come inside the rag market and it is <laughs> quite an interesting place. There's a little bit of everything here. I love this sign. The bull ring markets have been around for 850 years of trading. I've never seen so much fluorescent apparel for sale before. 
you need a safety vest, here's the place to come. Okay, I have a couple questions for the British viewers of this video. What is a fancy dress party? Is that like a Halloween party, a costume party? And I mean, in the States, we would only do that kind of party around Halloween. Do you do this other times of year? Please explain. There are definitely some good Halloween costumes for kids here at this market and also possibly for adults. I haven't noticed the Tim Hortons before here in Brown. Canadian's favorite donut shop. Might have to try it out sometime. Oh, and of course they have Canadian maple and all kinds of maple donuts. That sounds delicious, actually. We do love an arcade, so we're gonna check out this Piccadilly Arcade. I think the best bit is the ceilings. <laughs> the murals on the ceilings are kind of interesting. Corporation Street used to be the main shopping street in Birmingham. Look what's here on Corporation Street now. If this alley is so needless, why is it here? Now I want to show you some of my favorite areas of the city and some lovely buildings and landmarks in them. Starting with the Victoria Square area. I'm glad that I took footage of this area last year because now it's covered with fences and scaffolding and cranes everywhere. This is the iconic and grand Birmingham City Council House with an adjacent museum and art gallery. It was completed in 1879. You'll notice banners here from the Commonwealth Games which were hosted in Birmingham last year when I filmed this. There's a place we will not be eating, Tortilla, where they serve real Californian burritos and tacos. I didn't come to England to eat a taco. I do love a good Queen Victoria statue. And now let's stop by Chamberlain Square. This is a memorial that was put here to honor Joseph Chamberlain, a town councilor and mayor. It is here in Chamberlain Square, and this beautiful monument was restored in 1978, and these pools were added to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of the Birmingham Civic Society. On the other side of Chamberlain Square is this bridge I love because it reminds me of Oxford. And over here, atop the museum, is a clock tower known by locals as Big Brum. I really enjoy the architecture of a lot of these buildings in central Birmingham. And here is another place where I found an interesting juxtaposition of old versus new side by side. We were starting to really prefer the trams to the buses because they have air conditioning. Please hold Except this one. This tram is about now for the area that I think is the prettiest place in Birmingham, Centenary Square. This square has several noteworthy locations in and around it. We will be exploring a few of those now. The square is home to the International Convention Center, Baskerville House, the Library of Birmingham, the Birmingham Repertory Theater, the Symphony Hall, and a really cool water fountain. And also there is the Hyatt Regency Hotel where we stayed during our 2023 visit. More on that in a minute. But first, let's see what the top floor of the library has to offer. I'm here in Centenary Square, and this beautiful building is the library, which we went in last time, and I will show you what's up at the top of that, something special. And then here is Baskerville House, which is a beautiful building as well. And then here is a monument to King Edward VII, who has a special place in my heart because I live in Cheltenham in an Edwardian house with an Edwardian post box at the end of the street. And here's a horse playing the keyboard. Atop the library is a special place that we visited in 2022, the Shakespeare Memorial Room. This artifact is Shakespeare's death mask. This beautiful room was built in 1882 for the Birmingham Library's Shakespeare collection. 
The collection is one of the largest in the world and started in 1864 on the 300th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. This Elizabethan style room with carvings and woodwork and metalwork was considered a city treasure. So when the old library was demolished in 1971, this room was dismantled, preserved, and rebuilt in the current library, reopening in 2013. It contains the only internationally important Shakespeare collection owned by a public library containing about 100,000 items. When the room was developed in 1864, the founder of the room, George Dawson, said the time has come to give everything to everybody. It's nice to see that a couple hundred years later, this beautiful room and this priceless Shakespeare collection are free and open for anyone to come visit. Another bonus to visiting the Shakespeare Memorial Room is that on top of the library, you get some nice views over Birmingham. The new library, is not as beautiful as the Victorian library that was initially knocked down, but it's definitely nicer than the one that was built in the 70s that was truly a brutalist monstrosity. And right across from the library is where we are staying, the Hyatt Regency. That's actually why we're here. We came to Birmingham because we had a free night stay at a Hyatt hotel that was about to expire, and we had to go somewhere, so we're like, it's a quick trip to Birmingham, let's do it. Now let's have a look inside what it's like inside the Hyatt Regency Tower overlooking Centenary Square. And then I'll show you what's behind that, an interesting part of Birmingham that was totally new to me. I didn't even know it existed. Inside the Hyatt lobby, you'll see some magenta flowers and one of Hyatt's trademark sunny and bright atrium areas. This area is home to a very popular bar. Okay, we are just so spoilt. We're here in the lounge, the club lounge, and we kind of have the place to ourselves. And it has some awesome views of the city. It's a nice place to rest our feet for a minute until our room is available. This place is so fancy. It even has two levels to it. We just feel so posh that we get this place to ourselves. <laughs> and we've been helping ourselves to free snacks and drinks. We would be enjoying a hot chocolate if uh, it weren't super hot and sunny outside. And this is our room in the Hyatt on the 11th floor. We've got a nice little desk over here, and look at this. <laughs> the wine is wasted on us, but I'm pretty excited about the berries and chocolates. And I think we have a nice little note here, just because we are Hyatt members. And have a nice little view here from the 11th floor. You can see the canal, awesome little sitting area, nice big king size bed, super king if you're British. And then let's go check out the bathroom. We've got a decent sized bathroom with a tub with one of those funny shower walls. Very British. Now let's take a closer look at the canal area. Most of Birmingham's canals were built in the 1700s and 1800s and were a main transport mode for commodities like coal between Brum and other cities such as Manchester. Then railways and long distance trucking became more popular and the canals fell into disrepair. Commercial traffic stopped by 1980, but they have since been restored and developed making the canal area a vibrant part of Brum today. A bit later, I will show you the canals at night, which are particularly pretty. It would be fun to ride on one of these canal boats, get an interesting view of Birmingham. It's interesting to look at these canal boats on the canal, and then here along this brick railing to see the grooves where the ropes have just over time worn tracks into the brick. This is just an example of how, in a big city like Birmingham, there's so many different areas to experience. I've been here several times, and I've never been to the canal before. This is such a neat place. Of course, there are a lot of famous 
music groups from Birmingham. Who's your favorite? Tell me in the comments. Just noticed something here that the Broad Street Tunnel has over the top of it the Black Sabbath Bridge. Birmingham was the birthplace for a lot of great bands, and it's fun to walk through the city and see reminders of some of these groups, from Black Sabbath to UB40. Unfortunately, I didn't see any tributes to Duran Duran or the fun young cannibals on our wander around the city, but last year we went to King's Heath with my dear friend Christy from Los Angeles. She was here to see her rock star son James play with the love band at Heron Hounds here in King's Heath. This was the venue where UB40 played their first gig in 1979. So it was great fun to see James play here with the love band in 2022 and to also see my friend Christy join for a few songs as a guest vocalist. The Birmingham Jewelry Quarter is a vibrant area in Birmingham which is home to over 100 jewelry retailers and 800 businesses. This historic area has important connections to the Industrial Revolution going back to the early 16th century. By 1850, half of the jewelry sold in London was produced in Birmingham's Jewelry Quarter. Today there are loads of vibrant cafes, bars, and restaurants, some of which remind us of the history of this area. So what did we do here? Well, Trent wanted to visit the Museum of the Jewelry Quarter, so he went there with his brother Weston. Meanwhile, Ian and I wandered around the quarter, observing all the magenta things, the Weston things, and streets named after places we like in Wales. What we didn't realize when we were there last year was that a couple of Ian's ancestors actually worked here in the Jewelry Quarter and had occupations in the jewelry industry, as I mentioned in last week's video. We are starving now after all that walking around the city, so it's time for an Indian dinner. 10 minute trip to the restaurant took nearly an hour, but we're finally here. This place does not look at all like I imagined. In the Duke of Wellington Hotel. This is the India Cafe Racer. Racing motorcycle, I guess. He explained that this is an Indian street food restaurant and on the front page of the menu, all these things are small plate Indian foods from all different parts of India, all the different regions. And then on the back, there's mains. And I think we're gonna try this Rajasthani lamb. That's a specialty and I'm lobbying for the paneer makhani unless Ian talks me into something chicken. I also really want to try this gobi manchurian because it is supposed to be a signature dish of theirs. Update, we're getting the chicken makhani because Ian really wants chicken. And yogurt marinated chicken is delicious. Here is the gobi manchurian, that's the cauliflower with the sweet and sour sauce. I am most excited to try that. And here is the chicken dish. Oh, it looks really hot. And then the lamb, some pilau rice, and oh, we're gonna be tearing into that garlic naan soon. Looks fantastic. The food is fantastic. That uh, cauliflower is my favorite, the gobi. Both the chicken dish and the lamb dish are super tasty, but they're just too spicy. So I had to order some raita so I could cool it down and be able to enjoy it. Down here by the canal is a pretty happening place, even on a Wednesday night. Here's a little look at the beautiful scenes from Birmingham at night around the canal and Centenary Square area as we walked back to our hotel after dinner. This is really such a cool kind of puzzle piece building. There's the canal house and our hotel behind it. Everything looks different at night. The Golden Library is now green. In fact, green is the theme of the Centenary Square area. 
When we do a vlog of a British city, we pretty much always visit the cathedral, and we will in this video next. But before we do that, I'd like to share our visit to a place of worship that we thought had even more interesting architecture. It's called the Oratory, and it's the National Shrine of St. John Henry Newman. The Birmingham Oratory is a Roman Catholic church founded by St. John Henry Newman in 1848. St. John was a Catholic priest who joined the Congregation of the Oratory founded by St. Philip Neri in the 16th century. The current church was built in 1903 to honor St. John, and it is known as one of the most interesting architectural buildings of all the places of worship in Birmingham. This is definitely an Italian-esque church. I'm not seeing anything like this in England. It definitely looks more like a church we've seen in Italy or Austria. Last fall we saw lots of gorgeous churches in Austria. And this is definitely the type of pulpit that we would see in Austria. That is an amazing pipe organ. In researching the oratory after our visit, I discovered that J.R.R. Tolkien and his brother Hillary spent much of their youth at the oratory and the religious education and relationships they formed here at the oratory largely impacted the rest of their lives. It's really a fascinating story that unfortunately I don't have time to share in this video. There's a little side chapel here, and forgive me, but I don't know who it's in honor of. There's no signs here explaining things, but then below that portrait is this it looks like a coffin with a figure of him in it. Ian was speaking to a church warden at St. George's of Edgebaston this morning who suggested we come see this church because it was so unusual. And I'm really glad we did. And I'm also really grateful that it was open. The Birmingham Cathedral is known as the church that became a cathedral in a town that became a city. St. Philip's Cathedral was originally a parish church built in 1715 in the English Baroque or Baroque style. Four stained glass windows in the cathedral were designed by Birmingham's own pre-Raphaelite artist Sir Edward Byrne Jones, who also designed the stunning window in St. Martin's Church with William Morris. I shared that window in detail in last week's video. In 1905, the church became a cathedral and the seat of the bishop. It is currently the third smallest cathedral in the UK. The cathedral was badly damaged in 1940 by firebombs, but thankfully the windows had been removed and stored in a Welsh slate mine for safekeeping and were later reinstalled in the church after the war. I hope you enjoyed watching this video of Birmingham. Next, please check out either my food review of our epic lunch here in Birmingham or this video of our family history tour. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.